Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got this 1100 watt huge microwave to take apart. So this is the kind of microwave that would go on top of a stove. So this microwave has an exhaust system built in. Okay, here's the bottom. So the air would be sucked through these vents and then exhausted through here. So this microwave has two lights that would illuminate the stove top beneath it. So let's see what kind of lights we got in here. It broke off, but you can see it's pretty much just a regular old incandescent bulb. Okay, now we can take off the top cover. So the air gets sucked up from the bottom side through these fans here, and then it goes through this filter and it's exhausted here. Let's see if we can get this blower fan off. Here's the connector. Let's unconnect that. And here's the blower. This is a double shaft motor, so it has one full big shaft that goes all the way through. Okay, let's take off this front baffle here. Okay, so it looks like you have to slide it over like this and then it comes out. Okay, so over here is this, uh, it looks like a gas sensor. Uh, let's see if I can get it out. All right, here's the gas sensor. I'm not really sure what kind of gas this would be sensing, maybe like uh, carbon monoxide or something. But this is kind of weird. It's actually like socketed. You can see it's a six pin socket. And this is like a breathable mesh where air and other gases can get through. So this big black plastic piece here is like a baffle and let's see if we can try to take it out. There we go. The connector here. Okay, here it looks like there's a light here. Over here we have a little temperature switch. So this is a temperature switch. It breaks the circuit when it gets to a certain temperature. So this would make sure the microwave isn't getting too hot. So here's a little interesting detail. If we look at the wiring harnesses here, you can see they actually use like little pieces of plastic tubing to tie the wires together. You can see there's blue too. And that's really neat. It reminds me a lot of cable lacing that they do on airplanes. Seems like uh, doing these would take up more time and more effort rather than just doing zip ties. Maybe there's a reason they did these instead of zip ties. I'm not sure. Okay, so this is where the mains power connects here. So you can just unconnect that. So here's the capacitor for the blower motor. This would help the blower motor start up fast. Okay, here's our capacitor. It is 10 microfarad at 220 volts AC. Here's a transformer. I'm not too sure what it goes to, but it looks like the wires are going down, uh, down in here. So we'll have to see what that goes to. So right here is the main fuse for the mains input. This fuse is rated 250 volts and 20 amps. So I figured out what the transformer is for. So we have this little light bulb here. And this is actually a 12 volt light bulb. So this transformer here would be stepping down the power from mains power, which is 120 volts to 12 volts, which would be used by this little bulb here. So let's take that off. It has this little connector here. And there's two screws holding it on. Okay, here's our transformer. Okay, so here's the side. Here's our big tr power transformer. And under here is our magnetron. This is a cooling fan that would cool both the transformer and the magnetron. And here is a high voltage capacitor for the magnetron. Okay, so I'm going to try to get this front control panel off here. It looks like it just slides up and pulls out. Just like this. So it looks like down here we actually have some schematics. So let's see what we got. So 
is a parts list. Looks like a service manual. Got some schematics here. More service guide stuff. So wiring diagram too. And I'm just looking at this is all kinds of um, like technical troubleshooting and all kinds of stuff. Different things to go through. Oven weighs 62 pounds. It's pretty interesting. So this would be for the uh, repairman. If you had a repairman come and try to fix it, they would uh, use these schematics and uh, diagrams and stuff. But nobody really does that anymore. All right, so here's the main board. Some connectors going into it for different things. All right, so here's a transformer. This is a, a relay, it looks like a relay. We have four relays here. This is the flux cable that goes to the, the buttons here. And it looks like under this area is the display. I'm not sure if this is a LED display or if it's a vacuum fluorescent display, so let's take this circuit board off and see what it is. Oh, there we go. It's a vacuum fluorescent display. We have some surface mount components here. So some diodes. Some, looks like capacitors and resistors here. This is where they seal the uh, vacuum fluorescent display once they take the air out of it. There's the little piezoelectric element here. This is where the beeping comes from. It's like a little speaker. I wonder if that's like marking off a different um, circuit or something. So if we pull this up, is there a... There is the multiplexer. Underneath this piece of steel here would be the button pad. Alright, so let's go back to this. There's a whole bunch of tangled wiring here. It's like all looped around. It looks like a connector there. There's another thermal switch here on this piece of metal. Then there's actually another one over here. Okay, so there's two more wires running along here, going down here, and they go to yet another thermal switch. And that one is directly on the magnetron. Okay, so here's our high voltage capacitor for the magnetron. And beneath that is the fan. This cools both the transformer and the magnetron. The magnetron gives off a lot of heat. All right, so I'm gonna just disconnect this motor here. This is a induction motor. There's no brushes on this, it's completely brushless. Okay, let's disconnect these thermal switches here. Okay, so there's still a bit of wiring in the way, but if you see here, these are the switches. There's three of them, one here and two down here that close when the door is closed. These little, you can't see it. These little pieces here hit the switches, then they make contact and close the circuit. So the circuit board knows when it's closed. This is so it will only turn on when the door is closed. So there's this connector here. It goes to some wires that go underneath. So let's just disconnect that for now. So these wires here go to the transformer over here. This is the low voltage input into the primary coil. So now we just have the capacitor, the magnetron, and the transformer. So this is a transformer that supplies around 5 kilovolts to the magnetron. 
this transformer actually has two secondary coils. One of them is to heat the filament inside the magnetron, and the other one is to actually run the filament in the magnetron. So these are the two inputs, and then the ground is just the chassis. So right here is our high voltage diode, and there's our diode. It's got some shrink wrap on it. These are two high voltage wires going over to the magnetron and the transformer. It's 2100 volts AC, 0 0.91 microfarad. So this has actually got a safety resistor on it. You can see the um, resistor right there, 10 milliohm. All right, so let's take a look at the magnetron over here. So it's kind of hard to see here, but there's our magnetron. You can see the high voltage connector going to it right there. And it looks like this actually has a duct here um, that goes into the side. You can see over it goes through here to the side of the microwave. So this fan blows into this area here and through the magnetron and then the heated air goes into the actual microwave space. As you can see this magnetron is facing upwards. Most microwaves the magnetron is facing straight into the microwave cavity. So the microwave radiation goes through this waveguide here. This just guides it over here to the mode stirrer. So this is the mode stirrer here. And this has this round disc in here with these paddles on it. So when the microwave's on, it turns this disc here and the microwaves hit the disc and they bounce around inside the microwave cavity and that helps evenly heat the food. To get a closer look at this mode stirrer, there's actually a cover inside the microwave that you can take off to get a better look at it. So let's tip it on its side and take a look. Okay. And there's our mode stirrer. It's kind of loose. So this is what spins around and guides the microwaves. That way it evenly cooks the food. You can see the slots in it to let the microwaves through. Here's our mode stirrer. Now we can take this off. Here's our slow speed motor, 21 volts AC. Okay, let's try to get the magnetron out. Okay, so the magnetron is bolted in with these nuts here. So I'm gonna take those out and see if we can get the magnetron out. Okay, so I've taken out the bolts and let's see if the magnetron will come out. It looks like that plastic duct is actually holding it on. There we go. And here's our magnetron. Here is the antenna end of the magnetron where the microwaves come out of. You can see all the fins to help cool it down since it gets really hot. Here are the uh, big magnets. You can actually take these out if you're really careful. But there is a few dangers with these magnetrons. So you see this little ceramic bit here? You don't ever want to break this, scratch it, or do anything like that because this ceramic contains beryllium and that is really toxic if it becomes airborne and you breathe it in. It will cause serious illnesses. Be very careful when taking this apart. So inside here, there is a big copper chamber and inside that is a filament. And that filament is what gives off the microwaves. All right, so let's see if we can get this transformer off. It looks like there are screws going up through the underside here, so we're gonna have to flip it over to, in order to get those screws out. Okay, so I've taken out a few screws to get this bottom piece of metal off. This is the motor that turns the turntable, so it evenly cooks the food. And these are the two lights here and here. All right, so here are the screws to get out the transformer. Oh, that 
thing's heavy. Here's our transformer. This is very heavy. Big transformer, Samsung. Doesn't say the output voltage, but it's around five kilovolts. Very nice, you can do some really cool things with these. All right, so the last thing to come out is the fan motor right here. Okay, so there are some screws holding on this piece of metal here. So let's take those out and we can take out the motor. Here's that duct that guides the hot air from the magnetron into the microwave chamber. There's our motor. It's a brushless induction motor. So guys, that's about it for this teardown. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And please like, comment, and subscribe to support my channel.